Hi everybody and welcome back to part two of uh, Life is Better in Full Bloom, the uh, the square Kimberbell pillow. And I, I have my little blocks here. These are the blocks from the first video. So my three little flower blocks that were, were pieced. There's a yellow one, a pink one, and a blue one. And then there's going to be a leaf on these that we'll do at the end, towards the end. And then this is the first block that we did all the fun little chenilling and fringe on. So um, the, the, these were really fun blocks and I thought they turned out really cute. I love the little flowers. So those are the ones that are finished. So we've got four blocks done already. And then the next, this video in video two, we're going to do three more blocks. So we're going to be doing the Dresden flower the mushrooms and the life is better in full bloom block. So we're most of these, these are easy, a little easier blocks. They don't have quite as many techniques in them. And then the first one we're going to do the Dresden flower is actually, um, is actually more sewn. There's more sewing in it and there's just a little bit of applique in the center. So this will be a fun, easy one to do. So while the machine's sewing, I'll, I'll just kind of come on when I'm ready to switch the colors so you know what colors I'm using and so on. And um, we'll do the quilting together and we'll do um, the end is gonna, we're gonna use some flexi foam in the center of this one. This will be really cool. And then um, some fabric over the top of the flexi foam. So I'm real anxious to do this when it looks like it's gonna be really pretty. Okay, so I have got my, um, Dresden flower little baggie with my parts and so we're going to need the backing so my backing on this one was this stripe and then all of the flower and everything is just sewn and then you're going to use some flexi foam that you know that foam stuff with the little trico sides and then a piece of yellow for the center okay so then I'll tell you as we're going what colors I'm using for the fab or for the threads and uh, so let's, let's go ahead and get started. These will be fun. So there's going to be three um, blocks in this video. And they will, I think these will be maybe a little, they won't take quite as long. They, they have, don't have quite as many uh, techniques in them. And those little flip and fold blocks take a while. So these will be a fun ones to do, fun ones to do. So, okay. So let me get this over here. We're going to go ahead. And on the book here, it says... You know, to iron your fusible backing to the wrong side of your background fabric, which is the stripe. And I've got my, my shape flex, in other words, on the back of that. Okay. And there's no shape flex on the back of the yellow. You didn't need it on that. But you do need it on your backing. I've got my batting chunk ready here to put do my quilting. And we're going to quilt this in the hoop. And I'm looking here. I have my white thread, uh, my white embroidery thread in my needle and my bobbin uh, pre-wound bobbin in my bobbin and so this one we're going to start out of course with the quilting just like we have on the other ones I've got this in a five by seven hoop because I went and looked at my size and the um, the size of the block finishes at four by six so it's going to be about four and a half by six and a half so I can put that in a five by seven hoop so let's go ahead and the first thing of course we're going to do is we're going to quilt so I'm going to get my hit embroidery and I'm going to go into my stick and I'm going to get my quilting design and this one they used the spring two so we'll go ahead and get Kimberbell quilting and it's spring sorry my fingers don't always work on the screen <laughs> and we're going to go down to spring two here they only had a couple of the different ones that they used on the inside and then there was one for the outside flanges and borders so um, there was only three different ones they used so spring two and then we're going to get embroidery files. This is block by block, remember, because we're putting batting in it. My PES files. And then I need the one that's four by six. So let's see, four by, oops, I think we just missed it. Four by six right here. Okay, and this is the one that has the little watering cans and the butterflies and stuff. It's very cute. So then we're going to go get our design. So I'm going to set that. So you can see it's four and a half by six and a half, so it'll fit in my five by seven hoop. I'm going to hit the add button down here. Excuse me, can't quite see it. All right, and then we're going to go to back to the stick, and I'm going to go get my Dresden flower. That's what it's called. So we'll go to Life is Better in Full Bloom. P E S. Let's see here. 
where is here it is so here's the dresden flower right here so we're going to use that one now it says in the quilting the block by block quilt, quilting instructions in the book align the block embroidery file with the quilting design file so that both files are centered so in other words just when it where it comes up that's where it goes so it's it's going to be centered on each other okay so we're going to hit set so i think we're all ready to start going here so i'm going to hit embroidery where I've got my white thread in my needle, bobbin thread in the bobbin. I've got my five by seven hoop here, hooped with my no show mesh. All right, so I'm going to put this in. And then the first step, as usual, for our quilting is going to be the um, placement line for our batting. So I'm going to get ready, get my batting ready here. I've just got my chunk. Remember, I don't, I don't like to cut the batting, so I just use chunks of batting. You'll have to forgive me. I've been doing a lot of sneezing the last few days because, you know, things are starting to flower outside, even though we had snow last night. But I spend a lot of time sneezing this time of year. <laughs> and batting makes me sneeze, too. Okay, so there is our 4 by 6 area. I'm going to go ahead and, and put down my batting. And step number two in the quilting is always the tack down for the batting. So we're going to tack down our batting, and I usually just hold it. You have to kind of watch the batting; it like it's it it will stretch a little, so just kind of hold it down so it's flat. But this is so much faster than cutting all those batting pieces. I just I don't like to cut very well, so I just put a chunk up there because you still got to trim it even if you cut them. So camera a little closer for you. This one looks like a fun block. This is similar to a block that we did in the Valentine pillow in um, Let Me Call You Tweetheart, but they put fringe in the center of that one, and this one has the puppy foam in the middle. So we're going to go ahead and trim this close to the stitches. Let's see, get this trimmed. I'm just using my Ginger double curve scissors. If you don't have these, we do also have these up on shieldsewingcenter.com. These are a wonderful scissors. They're very sharp. They are a little bit on the dainty side, so just be careful not to try try not to drop them. I I have a tendency to drop mine all the time, so I have to replace mine, but I also use them a lot. <laughs> and I found that it's actually cheaper just to replace them than it is to go have them sharpened. By the time I mail them somewhere, and then get them sharpened and then get them and pay for the shipping back. It just, just go buy a new pair of scissors. <laughs> I had a lot of pairs of scissors. So, all right. So here's my Ginger double curved scissors. These work great for applique. All right. So now the next step then is going to be as usual. The third step is always the placement line for the fabric. And this time we're going to be using that because remember in the little piece ones, we didn't do, we skipped these steps because we didn't have a, a full piece of background fabric to lay down. So this time we're doing them in the correct order. Okay, so there's my placement line. Then I'm going to go ahead and lay my fabric down. Now this one has stripes on it, so I'm going to try to be real careful and get it laid down in here real straight <laughs> so I don't have my stripes going sideways or something. So let me see if I can get it good and straight here. And then step number four is going to be the tack down line for the fabric. And it'll also help us with our trimming. I think I've got them pretty straight. We'll see how we do here. That's the only thing with stripes. you got to kind of be careful. When you have directional fabric, try to get it in there as straight as possible so it doesn't look funny in the, in the pillow. All right. And then... Step number five will be our quilting. So now we're ready for the quilting. And I'm using that Hobbs 80-20 batting. Um, I really like it because it gives a lot of loft. Um, it's not heavy. It's not stiff. It's very soft, but it gives loft. And then you can really see the quilting, even if you're doing quilting with a, like a very matching thread like I am with the white, because I'm using white for my quilting. A couple of the blocks, they did do them in a darker color, so I'm not sure that I'm going to. I probably will do all of mine in white. I, I'm not very rogue, 
when it comes to quilting. Um, I did change it, a quilting color when I did my, um, let me call you Tweetheart. I went a little darker than I intended, and I liked it better, but I'm not sure about this one yet. I'll see how, when we get there what I, what I think about it. All right, so I'll just go ahead and pause the camera for a moment, pause the video for a moment while this is sewing, and then we'll come back and start our flower. Okay, we finished up our finished up our quilting, and I just think that's just so cute. It has the little watering can in it and um, the little butterfly, so I think that's so cute. Those are in the in the pillow. We haven't got to the butterfly one yet. So, all right, so I'm going to switch my my thread, and the first color in the actual flower is going to be the stem, and I'm using my um, palmetto green, which is 1087. It's a little bit darker green. And then that is going to be the stem and the leaves. So we'll get this started. And again, this is just going to be sewn. All the petals are going to be sewn. So I'll just kind of turn the camera off while it's sewing. So the video will be a little shorter and you can just kind of pause as we're going. And uh, we'll go ahead and get all these, get this little flower all sewn. I just love, I love to do some of these blocks that are, that are very um, uncomplicated. It's so fun to make them and, and then you can just kind of relax and enjoy watching them sew. Okay, so there's our stem and leaves. And the next part is going to be, this is step three on page 19 of the, of the instructions. And this is going to be the dark, darkest pink so there was three pinks in this so i chose for my darkest pink the 16 or 1368 horizon pink it's kind of a kind of a bright pink and that's going to be the first set of leaves and then the second set is going to be the medium pink and the third the light pink so there's going to be three colors of pink and these are all just sewn again so we'll get them started so you can see what's going on and again this is 1368 horizon pink this is the darkest one. And then we'll move on to the medium and the light. But these are going to all be like, um, I think they were programmable fills. So they have like a, like a texture to them. So they look really cool. So these are all just going to be sewn. So I'll be back in a moment when the, um, when the, pet, the first set of petals has sewn and we'll go on to the second set. Okay, so we're just finishing up the first five petals here. And they look... They call it Dresden flower because this sort of looks like a Dresden plate, you know, for when we do quilting um, Dresdens. Um, these were a little bit more of a smooth fill, so I thought they might have been more of a programmable. So let's see what the next one is. It's a little hard to see on the, um, on the picture in the book. Um, so the next color is going to be the medium pink. So my medium pink is, I have to find it here, is called, it's 1004. These are the, again, these are the brother... Um, what do they call them now? Pace Setter, sorry, Pace Setter Pro. They keep changing the name. Pace Setter Pro, uh, the Brother Threads. This is 1004 Medium Rose. So this is going to be the medium pink Dresden petals. Let's see if this one's going to be a programmable fill. This one was a little bit more smooth, so let's see what this one does. I can kind of see on the screen that one of them for sure looks like it has a a little bit more of a texture to it. So we'll see what this one does. And then I think, I know for sure the light one looks a little bit more textured, but I can't tell with this one. Let's see what it does. I really like the pinks together. Those are cute. And they did this, like I said, they did this with the, if you, those of you who uh, watch the, um, watch the, What's what this called? I can't think. All of a sudden, it just blanked. I just blanked me out. Oh, let me call you Tweetheart Pillow. And if you haven't seen it, watch that one too. If you want to do the Valentine one, it was really fun to do. I did that around Christmas time. This was pretty much smooth too. So, all right. So we'll we'll I'll just pause while this is sewing, and we'll come back. I think there's about five petals, four or five pet five petals. I think so. Okay, so we got our second set of Dresdens done in the medium pink, and now we're going to move on to my my lighter pink, and that is just pink, 085. This is one of the old original pink, and nice color of pink. 
So we'll do those and then we're moving on to the applique in the center. We'll use some flexi foam. And so far that one was fairly smooth too. There's a slight, you know, a slight um, pattern to the stitching, but this one, this one was smooth too. So maybe this, then maybe they all are. Sometimes they use programmable fills or like textured fills in these. All right, so we're going to go on to the last lighter pink for the last, I think it's four, four blades. Yep. Go on to that and then we'll come back and do the applique. Okay, so just finished up our little Dresdens and they were all smooth. It's hard to tell on the screen or in the book, but they were all smooth and they um, are very pretty and I had all, I have three, the three different pinks in there. So the next step is going to be the, um, we're going to start the applique for the center and we're going to use two pieces for the applique. We're actually going to use um, flexi foam, our little flexi foam here, okay. And it's got like treacle on both sides just to keep you from from uh, catching. It's easier to trim and stuff. And then our little piece in, for the center. So we're going to have a little poofy center. So I'm going to go ahead and put my yellow um, thread in now for that. And that is um, 205. And it's just called yellow. That's one of the original colors as well. And that's the one that matched my fabric the best. So we'll just put that one in and do our, our uh, placement stitch for the applique. And I am going to check my bobbin just a second here. Make sure that I have enough bobbin thread. Oh, yeah, we'll be fine. I was getting a little low, so I don't want to run out in the middle here. All right, so we're going to do our placement line. And the first thing we're going to put down is going to be the flexi foam. So we'll do our placement line so we know where we need to put it. And then we're going to, I, and it says to tape this down. You can tape it if you'd like. I usually just hold it. So they, they give you plenty of, of uh, material. So if you're afraid to put your hands in there, just put a little tape, a little Kimberbell tape on there. I usually just hold it. it. Saves a lot of time. I'm going to go around it a couple times, and then we're going to trim close to the stitch line. So when you're trimming this step, this flexi foam, it's a little, it's easier to kind of pull back a little bit. Let me show you here. Oop, get this out of here. So what I do is I kind of pull up on it a little bit so that I can get pretty close to the stitches because you don't want any of that to be showing, you know, on the on, in your stitching. So I kind of pull up on it and get pretty close. These little scissors really allow you to get close. But if you pull up, it kind of bounces back. Then it's a little on the stretchy side. And just try not to trim through your stitches, of course. Turned out to be a beautiful day today. We had snow last night, and a lot of a lot of places in Iowa had a lot of snow. We we only had about maybe two or three inches, but now it's like sixty degrees outside, so all the snow's melted. It, it was so pretty this morning driving to work. All the leaves or all the uh, trees were white. Okay, so whoops, this one's not quite trimmed enough. So let me get that a little bit better. Okay. All right, so then we're going to trim, and then this was at the bottom of page 19. It was steps 7, 8, and 9. And then we're going to, I'm going to turn my page, and it says to go ahead and stitch the flower center placement line. So in other words, it's going to give us another placement line here so we know where to put our fabric. We probably really know how to do that, but, we, but they just put another line in. So here's our placement line for the fabric. So we're going to have a little poofy center, and we're going to lay our fabric down. Now my fabric is kind of directional, so I think I think I'm going to lay it this way. So be be sure if your fabric is directional that you have it in the direction you want. Now this one actually, see with the poof in there, I might actually go ahead and tape that. Sometimes when it gets poofy. It's a little harder to hold and it wants to shift on me, so I think I will put a little tape on this one. So I can hear my tape is about gone. I need to get some more. All right, we'll take that one down because it's just a little poofy, so I think it'll be better. All right, so then the next step then is going to be the, ta the tack down line for that fabric. And then we're going to trim the fabric. And this one is going to have a 
um, motif stitch on it. So I would highly recommend using a matching thread um, to your motif stitch when you do that tack down because it might show through. So that's why I just put in my matching thread right from the get go. And then I don't have to remember to do that. All right. So now we're going to take this tape off of here. Second here. There we go. And then we're going to trim this close to the stitches. The fabric. Turn my hoop. Yeah, I think most of these three, I think all three of these blocks fit in a 5 by 7 Maybe the last one doesn't. But the first two do. I like, I think actually the, the last one might be bigger because it's the, the one that says life is better in full bloom. So I think it's a little longer. It might be in a 6 by 10 I didn't look that far ahead. I looked at the first two for this video. So, okay. So there's our center and it's all poofy in the center. Isn't that cute? So then the last step is going to be the motif stitch. That's going to go over and I'm going to leave my yellow in and it's going to go over the edge then. That's why you kind of want to, you know, stay pretty close to your stitching and then also use your matching tack down line. Uh, your tack down stitch thread. You want your thread to be the same color because it, it, this is fairly dense, but it could show through a little bit. I like that. Made it a little different flower than that. What was on? Uh, let me call you Tweetheart. So cool because it's kind of the same pattern, but it, they just did a little change on it. So I like that. Okay, and then it says the very last step. Do not stitch this step. So what they did is they put a little line up here in order to make it be even in the hoop. So when you put your embroidery design on, then you didn't have to move your flower. So I thought that was cool that they're starting. I've noticed they've started to put more placement lines in and then you don't stitch that. So we don't have to stitch the last step. So we're ready to go on to the next the next block. So there it is. Isn't that cute? And we'll do all the trimming at the end. So I'm just going to go ahead and take this out of my hoop and then I will pause for a moment and I'll get everything ready for the next for the next block. But isn't that cute? I'll pull this back a little bit so you can see a little closer. Isn't that cute? I love the little puffy center in the pink. So we'll get ready to go do the next block. The next block is going to be, let's see, oh the next one's the mushrooms. And this one fits also in a 5 by 7 hoop. It's, it's going to have a 4 by 4 it's going to finish, the actual block is finishing 4 by 4 so we'll put it in a 5 by 7 hoop also. So I'll be right back um, after I get set up for the next block. Okay, so we're ready for the second block. This one's, this one's the mushrooms block. And it is going to be, oh, done with the geometric, with the geometric quilting. And this one also has um, flex foam in it. So the little caps on the, on the mushrooms are going to have the foam in it to make them poofy. And then we got a couple of pinks for the mushroom tops. And then the, um, the stems are going to be these kind of little brown ones. Okay. So I'll tell you what colors I'm using. And then I'm also using the um, background pieces, this white. And again, I have my shape flex on the back, um, iron to the back of it. <coughs> Excuse me. And <clears throat> sorry, I have a, <coughs> I have a drip evidently. Um, and we're going to use the geometric um, quilting design and it's four by four. So, okay. So this will be a nice, easy one to do. This one's got more applique because all everything's applique on this one. So I'm going to hit my little house button up here and I'm going to go back <clears throat> to embroidery and I'm going to get my quilting design, of course, first. Now this one does say to use the geometric horizontal so it's going to be the other direction from the one we did before. So Kimberbell Quilting and this one's called Geometric 8. That's the one I used here. I'll we'll use if I can find it. FG. There we go. Geometric 8. And then I'm going to go to PES and then it says 4x4 four but then some of these are, so this is going to be the horizontal design. So it's going to be the one going, this is the one we used before, up and down. We're going to use the horizontal one, the side to side one. Okay, so we'll get that one. And then we're, and this one says 
yeah, just mushrooms. So I'm going to go ahead and hit set. Go back to add. You probably couldn't quite see my add button down there. It was right down in the, in the corner there. So we'll go back to the stick. Get to the mushrooms. Let's see. Life is better in full bloom. And the mushroom. So it's this one right here. So it's four by four. And then this one also says in the block by block quilting instructions, it says align the block embroidery file with the quilting design file so that both files are centered. So we're just going to center it. Going to hit set. And then I'm going to hit embroidery. All right. So, of course, the first thing we're going to be doing is quilting. So let me get my fabrics out of the way here for a moment. And we will do the quilting. So the first step is going to be our placement line. I'm going to go ahead and put my white thread back in because I'm going to quilt this in white. It kind of shows you too, as, as you can see here, I don't know if you can see it very well, but they kind of show you a, a, a little square here uh, for your quilting color. And I've been doing mine in white. I think it was kind of maybe the original kit might have been a little bit more off-white, but I, I have white fabrics in mine, so I'm using white. All right, so we'll go ahead and thread up the needle here in my white embroidery thread. Just got my bobbin thread in the bobbin. Got my piece of no-show mesh in my 5x7 frame for this one. All right, so here we go. We're going to go ahead and get the placement line for our batting. Let me get my chunk of batting. Yeah, but like this better in full bloom, I believe is in a larger hoop. So that one's going to be in a, oh, it's not too big. It is going to be in a 6 by 10 So it'll fit in a 6 by 10 That's good. All right. So we'll go ahead and put our chunk of batting up here over that line. And we're going to stitch that down. So the second step with our quilting is going to be the tack down line. I just kind of hold it. Just watch your hands. I I have a tendency not to tape. There are some things like that, like the center of the flower when it was kind of poofy. I do tape those just because they stick up a little bit, and then they um they kind of scooch around. So excuse me, my cat is going to decide she's going to come and visit. I think she like she hears me talking, and I think she thinks I talk to her. She's very quiet most of the time, but she likes to come and help me when I'm doing videos for some reason. So hopefully she won't be in the middle of everything here. She is about to start crawl over my uh, <laughs> crawl over my sewing machine to sit in my lap, though. So come on, come on. It's not a very good place for you there, cat. My cat's name is Gigi. She's a she's a she's an orange tiger kitty. You can probably see some orange over here <laughs> but she likes to help I had a cat named Molly a, a, a great big black long-haired kitty and she was like she had to touch me every second I was in the house so when I was sewing she was always sitting like basically right on top of me and so I learned to sew with a cat in my lap all right, so we're going to go ahead and do the next step, which is step three, is always going to be the placement line for our for our fab background fabric. Now it's going to hit you. <laughs> she likes to sit on my embroidery unit, and so when the when the you know when the hoop starts heading over to the left, she always she gets mad because it hits her. Okay, so now we're going to get our backing fabric. Let's make sure I get it right side up here. So here's my backing fabric going to try to get that as centered as I can over that. And then step number four is going to, gosh, I got some thread, is going to be our tuck down line for the fabric. I tossed the chunk of batting up there. Now she's laying on that. She's happier now. She had something. She, I've got my, my fabrics and stuff sitting in the spot where she usually sits and she's unhappy. <laughs> I have a, a little ironing pad next to me usually and she likes to sit on that. 
Okay, so there's our, our tack down line for our fabric. And now, of course, here's our quilting. So I'm going to go ahead and do the quilting, and then we get to go on and do the appliques. This is going to be the geometric one, so it's back and it's going to be kind of a serpentine looking, and then it makes into like a kind of a what do they call that? Like a mosaic pattern. It's really pretty. I like it. Looks like really neat with the fabric that I have. Because there's a little bit of a print on this fabric that looks really neat, but it's very ge geometric also. Okay, there's our quilting. I think you can probably see the texture in there. Isn't that neat? I like that. So and it looks really nice with my fabric. Okay, so then we're going to go on to the appliques. So I think we start with the... Take a look here. I think we're starting with the stems. So we're going to do the brown stems first, these kind of taupey brown stems. So I'm going to put in my taupe um, colored thread for these just because I know I'm pretty sure, well, these are satin stitches, so those would be okay to just leave like white in or something. But I'm just going to go ahead and put my taupe in. And the color I'm using to match these two is um, $3.99. It's called warm gray, but it's kind of a taupe tan. So that's the color I'm going to be using for my stems of my mushrooms. So we're going to put this in. So the next step is going to be a placement line for the larger stem. Whoops. Helps if I thread the machine. And then we'll put on the smaller piece. So there's two pieces. Yeah, so this is going to be the larger piece. I had this kind of little textured fabric for that. So we'll put that on over here. And the other one is smaller. This one's kind of directional, so I'll make sure I don't get it tipped. And then we're going to do the tack down line. So this is step number two on the instructions on page 21. And we're going to trim. Oh, they're actually going to do the satin stitch in between. That's unusual. I usually do all the applique and then do the, <laughs> and then do the satin stitches, but that's they're going to do the satin stitch for this one. So we'll go ahead and I'm just leaving the same color in for both of these because it's about the same. One's solid and one's got the little lines on it. So they're but they're about the same color. So all right, so we'll get that trimmed, and then the next step is going to be the satin stitch for it. So it's going to do the satin stitch. It looks like i got a hair sticking out here just a minute. Get that trimmed off. There we go. All right, so this is going to be a satin stitch. I thought it was decorative, but I think it's satin. Oh, it looks like the, um, the tops of the mushrooms have the decorative stitch on them. So again, we'll be careful with our uh, tech down lines so that we don't get them a different color of thread so that shows through. But this one is a satin stitch. Okay, so there's the satin stitches on the first stem. And then the next step is going to be the uh, or the placement line for the second stem. So I'll get my, this is more of a, a whoops, I'm going to have it on the floor. Um, this is the, the solid piece that's similar in color, but it's just a solid piece instead. So we'll put this one over that smaller piece. And I'm just going to hold it in place. It'll be fine. It's not going anywhere. And tack it down. So the next step is tacking it down. This is at the bottom of page 21, steps um, 9 and 10. And then I'm going to turn the page here, if I can. And we're going to be trimming this one. And then we'll be doing the satin stitch for this part. All right. So we'll trim this one. It's easier to turn the hoops. These are kind of curvy. All right, so there is the second one, and then it's going to be the satin stitch for that one. And then we are going to move on to the, the flex bone. Get this one started. 
And then I'm looking to see, they kind of have everything done in the same color. But I might, well, we could do one of the pinks for the placement lines and stuff because both of them are pink. I might do the darker pink. It doesn't really matter. But I am going to do my caps in two different colors. Okay, so there's the satin stitch for the second one. And now we're going to do the placement line for the two caps. And I'm not sure. I may have to stop in between here. It doesn't look like it stops in between the two caps, but I think I want mine two different colors, so we'll have to look. Once we get there, we'll figure it out. So I'm going to go ahead and put the darker color, the darkest pink in right now. And that one is my 1368 Horizon pink because my first cap is the darker pink. So I'll go ahead and put that pink in. And we're actually going to be um, doing the placement line for the... Um, flex foam, but I thought it'd be easier to see it in the pink, so we're just going to use the pink. All right, so this is the placement line for the flex foam first. This is page 22 in the instructions, step number 12. And then we're going to place our flex foam and trim the flex foam. This is a nice little small block. I think this one's only a four and a half by four and a half block. I like these pillows because the blocks are not so huge and there's not so many of them that it makes the pillows go together really quickly. These all look like they were fun blocks. So it did take a little bit to do those um, pieced ones though. Okay, so here's our placement lines and then we're going to do our, our flex foam for a second. I got cat hair on it and I'm going to lay that down. And if you want to tape it, you can. I'm just going to hold mine. And we're going to do the next step, which is going to be the placement line, or the tack down line, excuse me, for those caps. Usually goes over it a couple times. They always look so big in the book, and then they sell out, and they're like, oh my gosh, it's only like an inch square. Because <laughs> they always look so big in the book. Because the whole block's, block is only like four and a half. I think you trim it four and a half by four and a half so it finishes four by four. So you know that the, the little tops are not going to be too big. Okay. So now we're going to trim that flex foam. Okay. So we're going to want to get pretty close. And again, with that flex foam, it works quite well to kind of pull up on it. It's a little stretchy. So I try to kind of pull up on it. i got to get started first, close. And if you kind of pull up on it, it keeps it pretty close to the stitches. Just careful not to cut through your stitches. But I do like to I trim it straight, really close. And this, these scissors do work very well for this. I've tried a lot of different applique scissors, but this has always been my favorite kind. There's another kind I use for a different type of applique, but I've always loved these Ginger six inch double curve is what they are and they just they're very sharp they have a very pointy tip so you can get into things so if you can see what i'm doing here so i'm kind of pulling up i'm gonna to have to turn this though if i can get in here in between them here so I'm not sure if I'm close enough there. We'll have to see. Maybe we can work on this one for a little bit. It's hard when there's not there's not a lot of space in between the two of them. Whoops, I've kind of got my stitches there, so I hope it'll be okay. We'll be putting fabric over it, so it should be fine. Sometimes when you make boo-boos, it still turns out just fine. Okay. Turn it around this way. I have, I have to kind of, you know, work from the right to the left here. So, so I'm kind of pulling it up so I get close to the stitches. This one's a little one. All right. And you do put a fabric over the top, so that helps with the, but you would just still want to get pretty close to the stitches. Let's see if I did okay on this one. Looks pretty good. Got a little spot right over here that's kind of sticking out. There. Okay. Then the next step 
I'm going to leave the same color in and it's the placement line for the fabric. So it's going to be the, for the fabric over here. So I'm just going to go ahead and stitch my placement line for my darker pink fabric, which is this little bit larger one. And then we're going to place the fabric and it's going to tack it down. Oh, it does look like it's going to stop. So then I can change my color because I want to use the darker color on this one and the lighter color on this one. So this one, and we're going to lay this on here. This is not really directional. Now this one, again, I might go ahead and tape just because it's kind of poofy and they like to scoot around on me. So I am going to tape that one down and then we're going to tack our fabric down. I'll have to show you while this is stitching. My, my helper has, has calmed down and she's resting up here. She likes to hang out and uh, sometimes she gets kind of frantic when I don't, when I'm busy. And she, I finally got her to calm down up there. So she's resting now. She likes the batting. Okay, so now we're going to trim this one. I'll take the tape off. I'll trim this one. I won't lose my other piece. She's hanging out on her batting. She usually sits on, on that wool pressing mat and, and uh, it's, it's not on the table right now because I have my cutting mat over there. <laughs> That's nice and poofy. I like that. So now we're going to trim the fabric close to the stitches. I'm going to try to be careful not to cut through the stitches this time. That's going to be a pretty mushroom. It's going to be very pink. I don't know if I've ever seen a pink mushroom, but we're going to have them on our pillow, aren't we? I like the pink. Now I just pulled all the fabrics. I, I think I told you that in the, in the first video. I just pulled all the fabrics from my stash, and these are mostly Kimberbell fabrics. I think a lot of the fabric in the original pillow was actually some of their new line that came out with the new Oh So Delightful quilt. So um, I didn't have all of those fabrics, but I did have a lot of other Kimberbell fabrics. That just seemed to work fine. Okay, so I did use that darker pink in here. Now hopefully it won't show in the other one, but I think I'll switch my pink when we get there. So I'm going to go ahead. The next step is going to be a decorative outline for the for the edging. So I left my same color in for this one. And then the next one will probably go down to a lighter pink. That's really cute. It's really poofy, isn't it? I like how they give things dimension. It's always so much fun. And this one doesn't have a lot of embellishments on the um, app that you put on afterwards. Most of the embellishments are done like fringe and um, and the, the foam, so it's kind of neat how they did some of it instead of putting so many things at the end. So some of the some of the pillows and quilts and stuff have lots and lots of embellishments at the end, but this one doesn't. All right, so let's see what color pink do we need next? Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to switch my pink to my 085 pink. That's what matches this fabric heat the best. So that's my lighter pink. And then the next step is actually going to be the placement line for the fabric. So we'll do that. All right, so we'll get our placement line on here. My little trash can's getting them full. I'll have to empty it. I always have lots of applique trash, it seems like. All right, so then we're going to lay this one down, and it's going to tack this one down, and then we will trim this one. So this one's kind of, well, I'll, I'll just kind of get it. Sometimes I kind of fussy cut them. But this one, I didn't, it's going to have a little bit of the white in it. Just a few of the little leaves in the middle there. That'll work. Okay. And then we're going to trim these. 
and then it'll do another decorative outline. So we'll turn this one. Oops. Try not to cut through your stitches. I'm trying to be careful. As close as you can. Kind of like the pink, the pink mushrooms. This, this pillow really appealed to me because it was so springy and we're all needing some spring, aren't we? I think I'll do one more spring pillow yet. I'm going to try to do the welcome spring, the bench pillow that has the little rain boots on it. I'm hoping to get that one done soon after this one. Okay. So now we're going to do the decorative outline and it's going to be another motif stitch. So I'm going to leave that same color in along the outside edge of this mushroom. Okay, we got the decorative outline on. And look, we're done with the the second block for this video already. Isn't it wasn't that a fun one? I love the I love the dimension in the look how puffy it is. Let me see if I turn it this way. How puffy it is. That's cool. I like those. So there are our, our mushroom blocks. So I'm gonna take this one out of the hoop and we'll do the trimming here at the end. And then I'm going to set up for the last block for this video. It's called Life is Better in Full Bloom. And it's the lettering, the letter block. And this one, oh, it does have a little bit of applique in it, though. Um, it's mostly lettering. And it's going to have a couple of applique flowers in it. So I think those are might, might be done with felt. So I will set that up, and I will be back in a moment. Okay, so we're ready for the Life is Better in Full Bloom block. And this one is going to be, um, it's going to it's gonna be trimmed to four and a half by eight and a half. And so it's going to finish four by eight. So this one will fit in the six by ten hoop. So I have my six by ten hoop in here with my no-show mesh in the hoop already. And we are going, this one's a lot of its own. So there is some decorative, um, there is a little bit of applique with the little, with the felt. So they have you use the pink felt. And the rest of it I think is pretty much sewn. It's lettering. So we're going to have life is better in, in kind of a gray. And then the full bloom is going to be pink. So I might actually use, I haven't decided yet. My, my flowers are a little bit dark. They kind of match my lettering, so I don't want it all to be the same color. So I might actually go grab a little bit lighter colored felt, because I think I might like it better if it has a little bit lighter colored felt on it. And then I could use maybe this pink instead. So then there's a couple pinks. So you know, if you give me a minute, I think I'm going to go grab a lighter color pink, because I think this one's going to be a little dark. So just give me a second. I'll be right back. Okay, so I think I've got my other pinks here. I think I'm going to use this real pale pink. And I think it goes pretty well with this. We'll just use the little bit darker pink on it, but then I'll have a little more variety because I'll put my letters in this. So I think I'll like that better. Okay. So we'll use that one. And this one then says that we need to go, we need to go get a different, oh, this one's going to be done in the geometric also. And we need to go get the four by eight. So we're going to go get our quilting design first. And this one is going to be the geometric eight. Go down here to the G's. I have a lot of quilting designs. I didn't realize how many I had. <laughs> quilting our geometric eight. And then we're going to go to it. They told us to use the four by eight vertical so that it's actually when you put it in the, it's going to be horizontal when you put it in the quilt. But the block is up and down in the hoop. So we're going to go get 4 by 8 vertical. There's the 2s, 2, here's the 4s. 4 by 6, 4 by 8, horizontal, we want the vertical one. So we're going to get that one. So that they're going up and down, but then when you turn it in the, in the quilt, it's going to be horizontal. Okay, so we'll set that one. That's 4 by 8, so it's actually going to show up here at 4 and a half by 8 and a half. So I have my 6 by 10 hoop. And then we're going to go... We're going to hit add down here at the bottom. You probably can't quite see it. Add. And we're going to go get the Life is Better in Full Bloom block. So let's see here. I thought this one was really cute. Let's see. Here it is. Life is Better in Full Bloom. 
All right, and this one it says in the block by block quilting instructions, align the block embroidery file with the quilting design file so that both sides are centered or both files are centered. So we're just going to center it. I'm going to click set and embroidery. So now we're going to start with our white and we're going to start with the white because we're going to be doing our quilting first. So let me get the camera moved over here and I've got my white in the needle. I've got my bobbin thread, my pre-wound bobbin in the in the bobbin and uh, we're going to start out of course with our placement line for our batting. Now I'm going to make my cat mad because I have to move her off of her batting. So give me a minute. You may hear some noise back here. Come on. <laughs> I disturbed her. She was napping. She doesn't like it because I have her, her, her little ironing pad um, over on the other table and she wants to sit on it. And this one's hard that I have here. She doesn't like that one. Okay, so let's get our chunk of batting up here over the placement line. And step number two is going to be the tack down line for the batting. This one little chunk of batting, this one chunk of batting is going to quilt this entire pillow, I bet you, or very close to it. Maybe not all the flanges, but it's going to be pretty close. It doesn't take a lot of batting. I just don't like to have to cut it all, so I always do this. It works really fast. It's just a little faster for getting things in and out of the hoop and everything. It's going to go around it twice. Got my piece of fabric over here with my, of course, my shape flex. So that's the next thing that we're going to be working with. So all there was for this block was the one piece of backing fabric and the two pieces of felt. Okay. So now we're going to trim this close to the stitches. Probably can't see me trimming. I'm way at the bottom. This is a longer hoop, so. All right. If I put her batting back up there, she'll probably go up and sit on her batting. I think we all have our help. A lot of us have helpers in the, in the sewing room, don't we? I used to have four, and there was a real fun, I had a real fun picture of all four of my cats. They like to lay up on the back of my sewing machine cabinet because it has like one of those leaves that goes up. And I, I had my uh, machine in front of a window. And so they always like to lay in the sun in the, in the afternoon. So, okay, so now I'm ready for my placement line for my fabric. That's always step number three in the quilting. And I have my, my fabric piece here. And it's going to be white also. Sorry, I wiggled the camera. It's going to be white also. And I've got my shape flex ironed onto the back. Okay. Oh, I see what they did in the instructions. We, I think that would look nice with this too. Um, when they did the flowers, they did a lighter colored pink um, of the felt, but then they used the darker pink around the outside edge. So that might actually be pretty, or I could use maybe this one. Maybe I'll use this one because it's kind of in between and it looks nice with this one. So maybe we'll do that just to give it a little bit of, a little bit of variety. Okay, so now I'm gonna get this one over my placement line. See if I can get it centered here. Got hairs all over the place. This, some of my fabric was really ravelly when I went to cut it this time. Okay, I, I cut out of a lot of scraps. So I'm always cutting out of scraps that I have in my little scrap box. So, all right. So now, of course, step number four is going to tack our fabric down before the quilting. Second here, I've got my book in the way. So it's like I might need to get a new needle. I'm getting close. I think I might be able to get through this block. We'll see. So this one. 
this one is, yeah, so it's four by eight. This was kind of a long skinny block. All right, so then step number five, as usual, will be our quilting design. And off to the races it'll go, and then we'll start our block. Okay, we're all done quilting. Look at that pretty texture in there. Isn't that pretty? I like that. It's very pretty. All right, so now we're going to move on to, oh, we're going to do the stem first of one of the little flowers. One of the flowers has a stem and one doesn't, it looks like, maybe. So we're going to do the, the flower stem on one of the flowers. So I'm going to use my um, 1087 Palmetto Green. I'll put that in first to do the little stem. And then we will start the applique. Second here. So this is going to be a little fast one, so I'll just leave the camera running because it's just a little, I think it's like a little triple stitch for that. And then we're going to do the placement lines for the flowers. So I, as, as usual, I have my little tail that, that decided it was going to be up here, so we'll get rid of that. There's the little stem then. I, I think there was just one. There's a, no, there isn't one on the other one. Okay, and then I'm going to go ahead and do, um, let's see, I think I'm going to go ahead, since I'm using a really pale colored pink, I'm going to use the medium um, pink if for, for the, um, with this. So this is my light colored pink that I'm going to use for my appliques but I think I'm going to use instead of the dark one I think I'm going to use this medium pink and this is uh, 1004 medium rose so we're going to use this so it's going to then it'll give us a little bit of variety in the pinks so we'll have a real pale pink a medium pink and a dark pink they do a lot of pink in this block so all right so this is going to be our placement lines for the felt pieces two pieces here and then this one's going to have yeah deck it looks like a decorative stitch around the edge so we'll leave the same color pink in See which one it's going to do first. Looks like maybe it's going to do the big one. Yeah. Now they have you go ahead and tape these down. Uh, what I'll do is I'm going to go ahead and just lay this on. I'm not going to tape it, but before it goes back to this other one, they get, it's going to do them both at the same time. I'm just going to stitch this one down and then when it goes back I'm going to stop the machine and lay my fat my piece down just so that it won't catch as it's moving in the machine I, so I don't have to tape it it takes a little less time for me just to lay it down later this is the placement line or the tack down line for the belt it's going to go around it twice okay, and then it's going to tie off and it's going to move back so I'll just stop the machine briefly so that I can put the fabric down, okay? Just just in case it would catch. It's always a good thing to keep things from catching, so. It's very rare they do like two or three things at the same time when they're doing appliques, so I, I don't often tape, and so I just stop in between. There we go. And then we're going to trim. Gonna trim our little, it looks like little daisies. These are cute. Okay, so we're going to trim these. It looks like i got a tail, though. Let's see if I can get my tail out of there. There we go. All right, so we'll trim these close to the stitches. And it's a little hard to trim felt. This is kind of small. I was surprised that they used felt, but that was what they used. And... Um, be easier to trim in fabric. So you could have used fabric here. But the felt gives a little bit more texture. I just think it's harder to trim. <laughs> 
it's thicker. And these are pretty small. This one's not near as small as the other one. So we get these trimmed around the petals. Sometimes I just kind of trim around the outside edge and then I go down into the little, the little V's. Whatever works for you. here around this one it's harder to turn these long hoops in the in the machine though to get them trimmed got that one so, oops I guess I missed a part up here got to get this one it's pretty good I don't think I got very close up here Let's see if I can get this a little closer there we go. This one you'll need to be fairly close. Again, this was, I used the same color that I'm going to use for my decorative stitch because this is going to be a decorative stitch. So I'm going to flip this over here <laughs> so I can get to this other little one at the other end here. All right. This is a really small one, my goodness. All right. Get around here. I gotta get into these little V's. My goodness, how small is that? Just do the best you can. These scissors have a really nice point on them, so you can get down into those little tiny spaces pretty well. But they are a little bit tough. Teeny tiny flower. It's probably about, <laughs> I don't even know if it's an inch in diameter might only be about three quarters of an inch they always look like i said they always look so big on the <laughs> they always look so big on the screen and on the in the book and then you sew them on and like my gosh those are small Take a second here. i gotta turn this around one more time so i can get to this last one okay I have learned to trim in the machine so you can see what I'm doing, but it is harder when you get these long hoops. The 8x12 and the 6x10 are kind of hard to trim in. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and put this back in. I got it all trimmed. And then the next step is going to be the decorative outline. So it's going to do both of them at the same time, and then it's going to do the little center. The little center will be yellow. So we're using that same medium rose to do the outline. I thought it'd be pretty just to have a little bit of extra pink. So we got a light pink, a medium pink, and a dark pink in this one. So, so it's going to do the little decorative outline, and then we'll get ready to do the centers. Okay, I've got my decorative edgings on, my uh, little flowers, my little felt flowers. So now we're ready to do the centers. We'll do those in yellow. And then we're going to be doing the lettering. So let me get my yellow here. I can get a hold of it. This one's tight. I have a new new uh, spool of yellow. My yellow ran out and I'm just about out of blue. <laughs> so I have a new spool of blue. We may have to use that before we get done with this pillow because there's quite a little bit of blue in the next couple of blocks it seems like. So we'll do this decorative, our little centers here. Of our little daisies. And we'll go on to the lettering. I think it's going to do full bloom first. It's going to do the pink first, and then it'll go on to the gray, um, the, the other letters up at the top. Life is better in. Life is better in is what it's going to do in the gray. I like the little pink flowers. I'm glad I went to a lighter pink. I, I think it would have been too much of the same color pink in it if I'd used these darker ones. So I like that lighter pink. Sometimes you have to change your mind when you see everything together, you know. That's why I, I love doing these videos, because I'm doing this new just like you are, and I've never done this pillow before, so I'm doing this, you know, with you, my buddies, new. And sometimes, you know, you just have to change your mind when you see something you don't like. So I do that, and so if I excuse myself to go get another piece of something, then just, you know, bear with me. I'll be back. All right. So there are our centers. All right, those look great. So now we're going to do full bloom. And the bigger letters are going to be in that darker pink. It's 1368 
horizon pink. So we get that in and then we'll start the lettering. So these are all, these were fun, easy blocks. The next ones are not very difficult either. So I think the, the next three will go very quickly too. The first four were the ones that I knew would take a little longer because they had a bunch of technique and lots of flipping and folding. So here is going to be full bloom in the horizon pink. Okay, so we finished up the, the words full bloom in the pink, and now we're going to do the life is better in. Um, it looks like it's going to be kind of a, oh, like a triple stitch lettering, straight stitch lettering. And I'm going to do that in my light gray, or, or this is actually a little darker gray. So it's called medium cool gray. It's number 0218. So I'm going to put that in and do the last part of the lettering and then we will trim all of our blocks so i'll uh, get all get ready while this is sewing so that we can get our blocks trimmed yep it's going to be kind of a triple stitch so off it goes and i will be back and we will finish up our three blocks, get them all trimmed, and then I will we'll talk about the next video, which will be three more blocks. Okay, so I got the, the Life is Better in Full Bloom block done. I really like it. I'm glad I switched the color of the, of the felt because I do like the lighter colored felt and then it has more colors of pink in it. Doesn't that turn out cute? And look at the texture in that quilting design. I just really like that. So we're going to do the trimming now. So I've got all three of them out of the hoop and we're going to, let's go ahead and trim the first block first. So we'll kind of do them in order here. So we have our, our Dresden flower here and this one is going to be trimmed to six and a half by, or sorry, sorry, four and a half by six and a half. So let me grab my four and a half by six and a half inch. I have to always look at them. I have a little trouble seeing them. Yeah, four and a half by six and a half is this one. Okay, so this is my the smallest rectangle pop orange pop ruler. And then I, I always like to get the next size bigger because then I can lay it around there to help me hang on to it. So I'm going to kind of get that one organized and put this one on too. Whoops, got to flip this one over. I got my little, these have the little rubber, these little rubber feet. So make sure you put those down because every now and then I get them turned and then I wonder why it's sliding on me. All right, let's move this to more to the center. So you can use your your um, basting or your you know your tack down line to help you get it kind of centered in there, and that looks pretty good. But I like to put the other one on the the size bigger on just to help me hang on. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this on my Martelli roundabout. I did remember to put a new blade in my my rotor cutter, so hopefully it should cut better. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start, I'm left-handed, so I'm holding this in my left hand. I'm going to start over here on the right then. I'm going to put my blade in a little ways and I'm going to pull back to the corner and push forward. Oh my gosh, that cuts a lot better. <laughs> the other one was pretty dull. It's amazing how they get, all of a sudden they just get really dull. And I uh, struggle, I struggle with rotary cutters anyway, so I'm, I've got to be careful with them. My block kind of moved on me here. There we go. So I'm going to do all four sides. Kind of wiggled on me. That's okay. It'll be fine. And forward. Oh my gosh, that really cut better. It's amazing if you put a new blade in, isn't it? And there is our Dresden. Isn't that pretty? I love that. And it has the little center. The center is all poofy. Love that. So we got that one. Let's see. The next one we did was the mushrooms. And I think that one was a square one. So we'll move to the instructions on page 22. So yes, that one's square the block to four and a half by four and a half. So let me get rid of the rectangle ones here. Let me find my square. Get my little design up here. And then let me get my square pop ruler. So these are the square ones. This one's four and a half by four and a half. So it's the smallest one. So I'm going to put that one in first and get it um, centered on my, you know, my little tack down line there to help me get it centered. 
and then I'm going to put the next size bigger on just to help me hold it. Looks pretty good. All right, so then we're going to trim this one the same way. So I'm going to pull back into the corner. It helps me to start up a little ways and pull back than to try to get right in the corner. I find that I do better with the cutting that way. This one turned. All right. This one, so that was just a square one. Oh my gosh, look at the look at the loft in there. Isn't that cool? I really like that that block. That's gonna be really cute. I'm anxious to put this this one together. Okay, and then the last one had some specialty instructions. So let's take a look here at the book. So this one did have specialty cutting instructions for Life is Better in Full Bloom. So the cutting instructions are going to be on page 24. So this one is going to be um, four and a half by eight and a half. Yes, four and a half by eight and a half. So we're going to be kind of using a combination of two sizes of rulers. So I'm going to use the four and a half by six and a half and then the eight, uh, six and a half by eight and a half. So we're going to do both of these rulers. All right, so we're going to lay this down here. Get my rotor cutter out of the way. Lay this down here, and I'm going to put my smaller ruler in first. So that one we want to, if you, the, the end, on the ends of it, it's the same center size as the inside of this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my basting line, you know, that, that tack down line that we use for the fabric, and make sure that it's centered and then you can center it up and down as well and I'm going to try to get that kind of centered there so I know I've got my little one as close to centered as I can that looks pretty good okay I'm a little bit there we go okay and then we're going to put the bigger one the six and a half by eight and a half over the top like that okay and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to trim the the long sides first so we're going to go ahead and spin this around and we're not going to cut don't cut the ends the little short ends we're going to cut the long ends first the long sides i should say first okay so we'll do those first because it's going to be four and a half inches wide so i'm going to flip it around all the way around to the other side here like that. Then we're going to remove the center ruler, okay? And we're going to cut it then on the ends. So I'm going to slide this up just a little bit so you can see better. And I'm going to do my ends. So this it's going to be eight and a half inches this way. So we'll flip it around. We'll do the other end. That's why you want one of these mats. Let me tell you, this these are up on the Shield Sewing Center website, too. These are the best mats ever. I'm going to have to get a new mat. My mat's very, I've had this a long time. And my mat, I notice I've got a little spot on my mat that's needing to be replaced. So you can get replacement mats. So I'm going to go ahead then and take my regular ruler, and I'm going to connect the outside edges then. It's easier for me to do this with a regular ruler than it is with the pop ruler. If you can do it with the pop ruler, you can just use the edge, but this seems to work better for me, so I can see the edge of this one better. So let's flip it over this way. I'm going to get it flipped over. I could have turned it, but it was just easier for me to flip it. All right, let's see. Get this lined up here. I like this yellow ruler because it has, um, you can see the edges because it's it's got a color to it. So you can see the edges better. See how they kind of glow? And I've always had better luck with these. I, I love this ruler. This is a 5-inch by 15-inch ruler, I believe. And I got this at Missouri Star. It's kind of one that I've never seen anywhere else, and I got it at Missouri Star. Okay. So there's Life is Better in Full Bloom. Isn't that pretty? I just love the texture. Wow, that, that turned out really good. Okay, so um, to talk about the next video, the next video will be, let me find my little note here, will be the butterfly block, the birdhouse block, and the pinwheels block. And we're going to do some more um, fringe on the, on the uh, 
uh, the pinwheels. And I, I've got another little thing that I'm going to show you when we do the fringe on that one. We're going to still use that water soluble because that works quite well. And then we're also going to make the little dimensional, um, the little leaves that go on the flowers. So we'll sh I'll show you how to do those. They're very quick. Um, they basically just sew in the hoop. And then um, I'll show you how, to, how we're going to do those also. And then you just kind of tuck them in and tie a knot to put them together. So thought that was that'll be that'll be what we do in the next video so that'll be video number three so thank you for joining me so here's our block so here's life is better the mushrooms okay from this video and the dresden okay and then from the last video we had the three little roses so here's the three flowers okay blue pink and yellow and our watering can so we've got all of these blocks done how many we got seven blocks done already. So isn't that awesome? So we'll do three more next in the next video and I will see you then. So thank you so much for joining me and see you when we get ready to do three more blocks. Have a good day.